Thank you very much and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I'm just 40 minutes from here at the University of Kent, so it wasn't a long travel, to be honest. Uh, it's nice the previous speaker has covered all the things about lipids, uh, so I will not need to cover that. Uh, we had a lot of talks about uh, microfluidics and also the previous speaker talk, speaks about different lipid formulations, but why? Why it's better to use microfluidics? Why not just to use the traditional methods? For example, the hydration method that everyone is using out there at the moment. So in the group we are having, we divide the group in three different areas. So we have the drug delivery pharmaceutical product development, which we have formulations like lipid formulations mostly with using traditional methods, but also microfluidics but also pharmaceutical manufacturing process like uh, 3D printing and electrospinning, scaffolds, and the interaction with the lipids with the scaffolds also. But the most important, you need to also advance characterization techniques. Because, okay, you have the system, but how you can understand the system? And we do that by using AFM, cryo-TM, TOF-SIMS analysis, and many, many other techniques. I'm not gonna cover all of this in 15 minutes. Just a few things just to show you what we do. So as I said, the previous speaker had a very nice about liposomes uh, introduction, so he covered a lot. Uh, so it's very important uh, to have, uh, so those days we have new peptides, proteins, drug molecules, everything. But we need to know how we send those molecules to the body efficient, and also that the cells will take this uh, in. So we need a system that it can, likes this, part of those molecules, for example, like nanoparticles. One of the nanoparticles that's been used is lipids or liposomes, which is artificial vesicles, as the previous speaker also mentioned, is the only one from FDA, the liposomes, so it's there. We know that it's working, so, but we need to prepare it, make them much better. For example, we have done some studies previously and we published that if it's less than 200 nanometers, the cells, they like it, so they will take it in. And we have solved that by using also atomic force microscopy. We use that by using hydration methods. So we wanted to see what's happened also by using microfluidics. So the two methods has been normally used. Hydration method is the one that everyone is using it. So we have the cholesterol and the lipids. Usually we need the lipids so we make it more stable. Uh, sorry, cholesterol, make the lipid more stable. And then you need the chloroform and then all this process it can take uh, around three to four hours. So this is the method that everyone is using it. This is a method since 1980s. One of the new methods that uh, a lot of papers now the last four or five years say is microfluidics. And one of the systems we have is the nanosample system. With the nanosample system, we can have the same lipids we prepare in, but now in a couple of minutes, as you know, the ones you're using it, the microfluidic. So it's much faster. Okay, it's faster, but that, that, that means that it's better also. It's, all, it's not always the fast, the best. <laughs> so, so the project, so the, what I want to show you today is what we did, we, we analyzing different, we prepare different lipids with microfluidics by using different flow rate ratio and flow rates, and then we characterize those, and then we, we get the best that they're more stable from those, and we compare these release studies with the ones we prepare with the hydration method. So we prepare two systems, the stability, and also the release and the encapsulation of those systems. So the systems we use, uh, what I will show you today, we have more, so we use two liposomes, a DMPC and DSPC. We have uh, another three different liposomes, which I'm happy to discuss later. The two molecules I will show you is one hydrophobic and one hydrophilic molecule. We have also more super hydrophobic molecules, more anti-cancer drugs also. Uh, we have saw that previous from our previous studies uh, using two to one ratio lipid cholesterol it was one of the best and also one to one. So if you look, look the literature, one to one and two to one is the two ratios that's been used all the time. So what we did, okay, we said, all right, we'll, we'll keep this since we know with hydration method the one-to-one -one and two-to-one -to -one is very good. And then we will play with the different flow rates and the different flow ratios between those two and measure to see what's happening. 
We have seen, we saw that with the atenolol uh, molecule, we had almost 100% of the drug we put it was direct in. Uh, which with the hydration method, we lost about 10 to 15%. It depends on the percentage. Then with the hydrophobic mo molecule, it depends of what flow rates we're using. We had the same with hydration, but we're expecting that because this is the interaction of hydrophobic with the lipids, which is a huge area at the moment. So the first thing was like, okay, so we have a different flow rate. So we had a flow rate 1, 6, and 20. So we want just to try to use like a very slow one and very fast one. And then also we try uh, to play with the different flow, flow ratios that we have in, between the lipid and the cholesterol, for example. So we saw that, okay, if you go in, um, no, there's not any pointer, okay. So, for example, if we, with a slow one, so if we can faster, we can prepare a different particles and smaller particles also, but it depends on what you're using. For example, if we use the DSPC, we can prepare much smaller. So we will be able to prepare like 50 nanometer uh, particles. So then the most important was after that, so since we know which one was working, so which one, flow, what's happened with the flow rates, what sizes we prepare, of course, as we said, we want sizes that will be less than 200 nanometers for our application, especially for the cells to take it in. So we select those that they give us sizes more, less than 200, and then we did some uh, stability studies. Before that, we just want to use this IRs. Everyone has an FTIR in the labs, very simple. We want to see what's happening to the liposome, what happened to the lipid when it's going through uh, the microfluidic. So we didn't see any problems there. So the, the liposomes was looking exactly the same with the hydration method. It was very stable also. And then we did the stability studies. The, the small ones you can see on the corners is with the hydration method and the huge ones with microfluidic method. You can see with the microfluidics, we managed to prepare um, smaller particles and stay stable for longer times than the hydration method. The same also with the DSPC. So sometimes the hydration method was just because it was taking water in and out in the different temperatures, for example, but with the microfluidic, always, we had always the same. So the particles was very stable. Also after a month. One of the samples after that, it was like, okay, can we see that do we have still have particles there? There are stable particles, we have in the morphology also. So we did some AFM, we did also some mechanical measurements and also today, so we measured the adhesion and also the young modulus, individual particles one by one also to measure to see the differences between the, hydropho the hydration method and the microfluidic method. Then we went, okay, so since so far microfluidic looks good for us, let's see what happened with the release profiles. So with the hydration method, it will depend on what we're using, so what uh, percentage of uh, cholesterol to lipid we're going to use or what lipid we're going to have a different uh, release profile, as expected, of course. When we, when we went to microfluidic methods for atenolol, which is a hydropho hydrophilic molecule, we can see that almost we had always the same release with the different flow rates that we discussed. We uh, we choose as the most stable from the previous studies. Now with Q9, which is a hydrophobic molecule, that it will depend on what flow rate we're going to use, we will have a different release. So if you want, so you can imagine that if you want faster release, you can have in slow flow rate, for example, you want fast release, you change that. Just by changing, we saw that by, just by changing the flow rate, we can control the release. So that was much faster also in the preparation. And then we did some modeling of those. So we had, uh, we prepared some uh, models to understand what's happening by having also like what happened when you have a different percent of cholesterol, when you have a different flow rate, why the cholesterol is going inside the interaction because the, the release and what happened to the lipids, it depends of the cholesterol and the interaction with the liposome. And when you have a different flow rate, you have a different interaction there. So we did that also in the pre uh, previous studies. So just to, to conclude, 
So we prepare microfluid manufacturing method, which is much faster. We can see that it's more stable than the hydration method. Everyone, all of us, we use it since 1980s. We still use it in our labs also. We can change the release profile by play with the flow rate or flow ratio also. And also we can prepare smaller uh, particles. Of course, okay, it's some issues with, say, scale up the system in a big production, but uh, uh, for manufacturing, but I think that's something that will be the future of discussions, uh, if we can prepare this or not, because we just published also a, a paper last week, and one of the comments was, yeah, nice method, however, what's happening if you want to production, if you're going in a big production? Of course, it's not me doing that. So we have funders, uh, European funders, international funders, local funders also in UK, and also uh, my group. Uh, haven't been in the lab for a year now, probably, writing grants. And thank you so much for, for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, we actually marvellously got back to time as well, so you've done very well. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any questions, anybody, on that lovely formulation? Uh, we can have a discussion later also to keep on time. It's, uh... <laughs> no, I think you, do, you deserve your questions. Okay. Really, 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 really so, uh, has anybody got any questions? Yes, Kessie? Hey. Thanks, great talk. <laughs> Great talk. We love to see this on microfluidics. Um, my question goes to the release profile yeah. uh, of your drug from the different uh, liposomes prepared at different flow rates, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Did you also look at the relationship between uh, drug release profile and liposome size? Yes, we have. We haven't published that. That's why I didn't show it today. Uh, but we can discuss later. I can. So you should have some results for this. So the it depends on the size of the, yes, it depends on the size also of the liposome, but again, we saw a patent in some point of what's happening with the flow rates. But it depends on the hydrophobicity of the molecules also that we used. Thank you. So if I could ask just one question. Yes. What, in, in, in very quick summary, what would you say are the benefits microfluidics using this approach as opposed to some of the traditional methods? Where, where are you seeing the added value for you? I think it's, it's, it's faster. You can earn more stable lipids in the, out there. And also, uh, one talking this morning was from Professor Yvonne Perry that you can get back also some of the lipid you lose also with one of her methods. So that's cost effective and time, which is the most important in everything we do as far as I, I believe, yeah. <laughs> Especially for pharmaceuticals, that's so expensive. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, very much. Thank you. Well, thank you.